I got to see Finest Kind uh, just the other day, and I enjoyed it. So great job. Thank you. And, you know, first thing I have to say is there's a lot of fishing in this movie, which makes sense given the, the premise. So how much did you study in real life to get ready to portray that skill set? Uh, well, yeah, it was very important to uh, Brian Helgeland, who um, was the uh, the writer, director. He really wanted us to get this right. It's his world. This is a world that he grew up in. He's, he comes from, I, I believe, two generations of commercial fishermen in New Bedford. And he was a commercial fisherman himself before he spun out, spun off into, into uh, Hollywood and started uh, screenwriting. Um. So he knows the world very, very well, and he wanted us to know the world very, very well. So he called in favors with some with some old family friends that he had in New Bedford, and um, he got myself and and several cast members the opportunity to go along with these fishermen on a week long fishing trip out to sea. So we went out on a on a scallop boat. And uh, in in April weather, which was which was pretty brutal at the time, and um, and saw how these guys live and 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 work, and um, and it was it was a lesson, man. It, you know, it's it's a it's an incredibly incredibly difficult job in uh, in 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 every possible way, and. Um, it takes incredible fortitude and and skill to do it, and um, and we were out there learning with the absolute best of them. Yeah. Now, are you as good as uh, at chucking as the movie makes it look? I'm. I, I never got good at it. I I had a pretty. My experience on the boat was uh, very humbling to say the least. Like I I get very seasick and. Um, I was really hoping that at some point I would uh, I would get my sea legs, and I, I just happen to be one of that very small percentage of people who doesn't get sea legs. It just doesn't happen. So like I was I was sick and throwing up for like almost a full week. Um, so I didn't <laughs> I didn't manage to really master a lot of the the finer skills. Uh, I know I I I can chuck a scallop for you. <laughs> but, uh, I, I wouldn't say that uh, that I'm, I'm uh, any kind of crack shot at it or anything. I'm sure you can do better than I can, which is to say not at all. So yeah, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> how were uh, how were those uh, the fishing scenes filmed on the water? Where did you guys go out in a boat and do that, or was it a lot of stage work? No, we, it was all it was all uh, on location. You know, we were actually in New Bedford, and um, we took out a real a real boat called the Sandra Jane. Um, and, uh, we went out in the Harbor and, uh, we went on a, went on a couple of actual fishing runs and, and brought up a real scallop. So everything that you see in the movie, that's, it's a hundred percent authentic. What did you do with all the stuff that you caught? Uh, the, the fishermen kept it. That, that, oh. that's what they do, you know? So, um, they kept it for, uh, for, for later sale, I'm sure. And, um, and we got the the wonderful perk of getting to taste seafood seconds after it's caught after it's pulled out of the ocean like the freshest you will ever taste it in your life so yeah literally they would drag up the scallops and um ismail cordova cruz who's one of one of the other uh, actors in the cast uh we, we would shuck it and and uh, cut out the scallop and give it to Ismail. And he ran straight to the kitchen and made ceviche out of it for everybody with uh, with a little bit of lemon and, and salt and whatever, whatever like magic ingredients he had, brought it back out. And it, it you know, it's the, the best scallop I've ever had in my life, for sure. Now, for you, Eskimo, uh, what was the hardest part of, of zoning in on that character and to get it to screen? Um... You know, the most—I don't know if I'd say the the most challenging part, but 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 the challenge was just sort of to figure out, you know, who this guy was. He's um, you know, he's 
he's like a charming rake, you know, he's the, he's, he's the life of the party and um, very quick with a joke. Um, and that's the side of him that, that you see the most. Um, but obviously there's a, there's a flip side to Schemo. Um, so exploring that was important. You know, who is this guy when he's not entertaining and amusing everybody, you know, who, yeah. who is he on the inside? What is his, what is his subtext, you know, um, as a person? Um, so that was something that was, that was interesting to, uh, to explore and figure out. So speaking of your character, you know, he doesn't end on, on the best of notes. What do you think mm -hmm. is next for him? I mean, uh, hopefully rehab. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's a very important aspect of, of Schemo's character is that, uh, that he's an addict. And, um, you know, what happens in the movie, he ends up, you know, doing things that, that he wouldn't ordinarily do he's not in the driver's seat anymore you know there's there's something else that that are, that's making the the decisions for him so obviously i i hope that i hope schemo f finds his way out of that you know gets out from under that what my next question which i feel like was probably already answered with your fishing trips and kind of what you did ahead of time but you know maybe outside of that did you and the cast do anything off screen to help build that camaraderie between the crew members yeah, well, you know, the the fishing trip really helped that. Um being out at sea for you know, for for a week and just being in that enclosed space under those arduous conditions together like it 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 brings people closer for sure. Mm -hmm. So we so we bonded a lot during that period of time. Um and also it's just a really great group of people. Everybody really i mean everyone was really excited about the material you know it's like it's it's a really good script it's a chance to work with um with brian who's who, who's a legend and um and i think he, he just he, he chose the right people you know and uh there, there really was just sort of a, a natural chemistry there between everybody and it, it felt like we were on intimate terms like instantly out of everyone who do you wish you had more scenes with is there any like actor or character that you kind of I got wish? so much to I mean I was so lucky to have you know I I got I got a lot of stuff with um with Jenna Ortega and 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 Ben Foster and Toby Wallace and my my partner in crime Scotty Tovar uh who played Nunzi and uh Ismael Cordova Cruz uh, you know I I I got to work with with you know m most of the people that I I would have wanted to um i didn't really end up having anything with tommy lee jones and um you know miss the man's an icon so uh, <laughs> obviously i mean it was fun just to even be in the vicinity of, of him and watching him do his work um so I, I count myself lucky for you what was the most unique part of this film and working on this film compared to everything else you've done before oh but, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think, um, you know, as I said before, I, the authenticity of it, I think, I think was, was really refreshing that, that, um, this was a story that was written by a person who absolutely ha had lived this life and who intimately knew all of these characters. And we were actually in the place where all of this was, incubated and and born um so that that was pretty great there was no leap of faith required there's actually you know obviously no no green screen uh required here really and um you're just you're just there and and you're in it you know you mentioned how authentic it was and that this came from you know brian's kind of life um did he uh do you know if he had any uh run-ins with the canadian uh, coast guard I don't did, did that come from a, a real experience uh i don't know that it came from brian's experience but we you know when we were out on the boat uh i did i i met a, a guy who he had had that exact experience he, he wasn't uh it wasn't canadian waters he got caught in but he was um he was fishing 
for something that was highly regulated and 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 uh, he was playing pretty fast and loose with <laughs> with with the rules and um and yeah he told me you know we 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 were doing that and these it was a little bit more like the wild west back, back in those days and um he said indeed he came, he came in with a with a shady catch and um and was caught and the boat was impounded and his whole life was flipped upside down. So that, that stuff, you know, does happen very often and can happen easily. Yeah. I can imagine as the movie makes very clear, grabbing a hundred thousand dollars to pay off a fine is not the easiest task in the world. No, no I wouldn't <laughs> think so. Can you recall any fun uh, deleted moments or scenes that maybe didn't make the final cut of the film that you wish audiences would have the chance to see one day? Uh, there's a, I mean, there's a ton of stuff. Um, because, you know, Brian, he's very, um, you know, he's very collaborative. There, there's, there's some directors that really want to maintain, you know, very rigid, tight control over everything. Um, and he's, he's not like that, you know, he's, he's very clear in his vision. He knows what he wants, but he very much wants to work with you and allow you to bring your, whatever you want to bring to it. You know, that, that, that's why you're there. So there were loads and loads of scenes with just a lot of improvised dialogue, improvised moments. There was like an entire sequence where um, Toby was was like playing a like a, a pickup basketball game with uh, with Jenna. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Toby's like six foot something and Jenna's like, you know, five foot nothing. So it was, that was, that was a pretty amusing scene. And that was me and, um, and Scotty Tovar on the sidelines providing all sorts of like heckling and, and, uh, and harassment. Um, so there were a lot of pretty, pretty funny moments in that, that would make, make good outtakes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to pivot and I, I have to ask, uh, so, Hugh Jackman is returning uh, to his role of Wolverine in Deadpool 3 and plenty of rumors about other mutants, you know, around the corner, whether in that movie or just in the future of the MCU. Uh, you know, would you ever be up for playing uh, Pyro again, whether that be real soon, like Deadpool 3 or just any time in the future? I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it. You know, it's, it's a character that, um, you know, I've, I've been there and done that. Um, I, I quite enjoyed it and I, I, st I still have many, many fond memories and, um, and a lot of fr lasting friendships, uh, from those experiences and, uh, and I don't know, man, it's, you know, it's, it's an intriguing question. I would, uh, I would have to, uh, I'd have to consider it. I'll cross my fingers. You know, with the multiverse, anything is possible. So it's true. Very and true. you know. I've also yeah, I've been a big fan since uh, Nikita, which is you know a throwback at this point. Thank um, you. Yeah, I guess it is, man. Yeah. Wow, time, time flies. <laughs> yeah. How interested would you be in a possible you know revival if that option ever presented itself? Of Nikita? Yeah. Man, I don't know. I mean, I you know all, all this stuff is is hypothetical. I, I certainly would. I would. I would absolutely think about it. I don't know how or in what like world that that would happen i mean you know nikita's really funny like we live we really we live in a world of, of of reboots now but nikita is you know like a a reboot of a reboot of a reboot so like, you, know, you have like the original nikita lupe son nikita and then you have the american remake with bridget fonda and then you have i i don't know if it's like three television series or or two i i, I don't know what it is but it's just like you know it, it's a it's a super well first of all the, the original movie is just is just brilliant it's fantastic yeah. um and i think it was just so intriguing and so cool that you know people just endlessly you know see that see the potential for that and and want to breathe new life into it so um I mean, look, Burkhoff was was a really, really fun character. I, I really enjoyed uh, playing Shadow Walker. So yeah, if they figured out some way to like breathe Shadow Walker back, you know, back to life, I, I would certainly explore that. Yeah. Hey, you never know. You but, never know. Yeah. <laughs> Before I head off, I want to I want to ask, you know, is there anything else that audiences can look forward 
uh, to see you in after Finest Kind? What's next? At the moment, at the moment, just please, uh, please watch Finest Kind. It was a labor of love, and um, and you know we absolutely put every everything that we had into it, uh, heart and soul. So really want people to see it. And um, you know, right now in uh, in Hollywood, things are the wheels are just sort of beginning to turn again post strike and uh, auditions are beginning to pick up so yeah we'll we'll see what's next yeah i mean i enjoyed the movie so i'll be sure to to tell people about it uh, thank you yeah i look forward to whatever comes next thanks man